Hello world and welcome to a brand new tutorial series all about the Ars Nouveau mod. Now we're going to be using some add-ons here, we're going to be having Ars Elemental, Ars Creo and Ars Instrumentum as well. They don't add many things besides Ars Elemental but we'll be covering those as well. Now to start off with, I'm going to mention that we are going to be doing this tutorial series in a couple of different parts. There's essentially three different tiers to Ars Nouveau. The first one is going to be everything that you can do inside of the overworld. To tier two, you eventually have to go to the nether and tier three, you have to go obviously a little bit further. Ars Elementium adds in a tier four status, but we're not going to be covering that today, obviously. Um, so this is going to be essentially part one of the tutorial series. This is going to be all things you can do in the overworld. This is probably going to be a few parts in itself just to cover the overworld stuff before we head on to tier two. The first thing you're probably going to want to make is the worn notebook. This is simply made with a book and a piece of lapis lazuli and this is going to be your guidebook to the game. Opening it up you're going to get plenty of different icons here being saying where you want to do everything. However it's not in the best order I would say in making uh, your progression but there is obviously the getting started tab where you can go into many different things and choose your own order of things. But how I'm going to be doing it is what I think the most efficient way of getting through this mod is. Some things about the world, there are some new generation things in the world. For one, we have archwood trees. We have got blazing, flourishing, cascading, vexing and flashing. Now each of these different trees, they have a different type of fruit. They grow just like cocoa beans on side of jungle wood. And each one of these has their own effective ability and they can be used to make five new potions in the game. We have the bomber granites used to make blasting potions, mendostein to make recovery potions, frosty eye to make freezing potions, bastion fruits to make defense potions and flash pine to make static charge potions. So here we have a brand new biome. This is the Archwood Forest and is a biome brought to us by Ars Nouveau and it's basically a forest that has all the five different trees that you can get inside of Ars Nouveau. Each of these have different properties being the blazing is a little bit more fiery and the vexing is a little bit more to lightning but as you can see they all have their own different types of fruits that are growing on the sides of them. Now we're just going to demonstrate what each of these different types do, starting with the Bomber Granite. This is essentially going to give you a uh, sort of a explosive effect. It fills you up just a little bit, but as well as that, it's up the five second mark where it counts down, you are going to explode. Next we have the Mendo Steam. This is essentially going to give you a recovery effect, just regain some health and maybe some mana regen. Next up we have the Frost Dyer, this is basically going to cause you to have a little bit of a freezing effect and slowly over time you're going to have your movement slowed and your person is going to be shaking ever so slightly as you can see here. Obviously with the potion if it's flat splash damage you can cause an enemy to start slowing down as well. Bastion Fruit is next and this is going to give you a shielding sort of protection effect so you'll be able to take more hits and then lastly we have the Flash Pine. When you eat this it's going to give you a glowing outline or if you attack with it a glowing outline as well as that they're going to get shocking three so they're going to be shocked for a little bit of time as well. In the world, there's also going to be a brand new type of food. These are source berries. Now, the source berries can be found in tiger biomes or archwood forests, and it is a very good early waveform of getting your food as they grow incredibly quickly. As well as that, they can be used to make potions of regeneration. As well as that, you can also make so source berry pie and source berry rolls, each of which will give you plenty of haunches, as well as grant extra mana regeneration when you consume it. Now, we'll go more into mana very shortly. There are three brand new mobs in the world that will spawn. We have got the Guardian, the Hunter and the Stalker and when you kill each they will have a potential chance of dropping either a spike, a horn or a wing. Now these are going to be crafting components later on so you do want to farm them up early game if you do end up finding them. Now in the world they look like this. We have got the Guardian first who looks like a polar bear with spikes. Now he will attack you by firing the spikes at you. Then we've got the Hunter. This guy can spawn in walls to attack you. He's essentially the pack leader. And then you have the Stalker. This guy can fly and fly straight at you and deals a bit of a punch. There are also three passive mobs that you can find inside the world. Now these can be found in various different locations. Uh, however, you'll probably more likely find them the most inside your Archwood Forest. So that's another good reason to find this biome to begin with. We have got the Drigmi. This guy is going to be more around animals and tending to animals. 
Then you've got the Starbuncle. He is just going to be, you know, walking around any type of forest. It doesn't matter which forest, but you can find him there. Now, this, if you're playing in an older version, this is actually the Carbuncle. But in 1.19.2, it's now the Starbuncle. And then you have the Whirly Sprig. This is going to be anywhere in forest skin, and they are generally around any sorts of trees. These aren't the three only passive mobs you can get in these. Another name for these would be familiars, but these are the only ones that are naturally spawning in the world. There are other familiars, but you have to force spawn them in, but that'll be later on in this series. So part one, let's go into all the things you can do in the overworld, or at least most of them anyway to start off with. The very first thing you're going to want to make is the novice spellbook. This is essentially your tier one spellbook in order to do tier one spells. Made with just a set of iron tools and a book, this is going to be your start into this series. Now, when you hold this in your hand, we can see that we've got this new icon in our bottom left. Now, we have got a numerical value on our one. Your one in your pack may not have a numerical value. The reason I have this value is due to the Ars Instrumentum mod, and it's pretty much the only thing that it adds. It allows us to have an accurate numerical value when we have our mana bar in the corner. Now, by itself, this isn't doing anything. As you can see, we have got, got a 1 down there, but when I right-click, it just says Invalid Spell. To start off with, you have to press C while holding this book in your hand, and this will give you your interface about the book. Now, before we go into the actual spells themselves, we're going to go over to the book and other things it can do. We have documentation, which is essentially your guidebook, so you do not have to have this worn notebook anymore. Uh, but uh, it's a lot better, I, I find, just to be able to right-click on this book than having to press C and then click over here. Then you've got your colours. Your colours can be set in any way, and this is essentially going to be your spell cast. As you can see, we've got these little wisps sorts of going around. When you cast spells, you'll have these wisps going around as well, and that just sets your colour color and then remember to click save uh, then you also have familiars familiars are going to be later on in this series but obviously we have none then you have got sounds some um spells are going to have some sort of little added spell effect now what you can do is just change the volume pitch and all this sort of stuff as well as that you can mute it if you so wish uh or you can have these other ones gaia that is something to do with batania but just remember to save but here we go we can test and as you can see you can just change all of these to however you want I'm going to leave it as default for now. And then we have got dynamic lighting. Dynamic lighting is when you shoot your different icon, your different wisps around, a, a trail of lights will light up the area as you fire it. It does reduce lag or it can reduce lag depending on your PC, so I recommend keeping it off. But now we want to go into actual spells. When you first start this game, you are going to have five different spells, three different forms and two different effects. That's essentially how this works. And you've got 10 different spells you can have in total. Now you've got Plenty of different spots down here because what you can do is first you have to pick a form. You can't pick an effect. If you pick an effect first, nothing will happen. You have to choose the form that you want your spell to have. So the very first thing that most people do is create a mining spell. So for this, we're going to use touch. So this means anything that we touch is going to obviously start um, making the spell. I don't know why there was a visual glove bug there and it didn't come down here. But when you just close it and reopen it again, you have touch down in the corner. And then we can do two different things. We've got break or harm. We want to do mining, so let's do break. And then just for ease, let's call this mining. Then we click create. Down in the corner here, you can see that it says number one is mining because we're in our number one spell slot. We have mining. Now, simply what we can do with this is when we right click, we'll use a little bit of mana and we'll be able to mine blocks, as you see here. Now, as this is just a basic spell, you won't be able to break anything with this. If we had a bit of obsidian here, we will not be able to break that as our spell is actually not powerful enough to do that. So if we break this here, as you can see, nothing's happening. So it's not the strongest spell. You can't break everything. And it, but I think of it as a essentially a tier of an iron pickaxe you can basically mine anything as an iron pickaxe would with the basic spell as you have here going inside let's go to the next one to demonstrate the next ones we have got projectile and how about we do this for a shooting spell so i'm going to call this spell arrow just for fun and we're going to have this on our second slot here now that automatically takes us to obviously spell arrow but what if we want to actually go back to our previous spell? So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can click one and then just recreate. And then it obviously has your mining here. That's a little bit tedious and you won't want to be doing that in the heat of battle while you're going around. The next option is you can obviously have two books if you wanted to, but again, not very effective. 
So the best way people generally do it is by using when hitting the default key V and this brings up your spell quick select. This is going to be your 10 different spells and obviously they show you exactly what they are here and this is why it's a good way to name them because then it will tell you exactly what each one does because some of them might use very similar icons as you can see here. So we can quickly switch between the two. As well as that there are default keys Z and X in order to change your, um, your different icons but for me I've changed them to mouse button 5 and mouse button 4 just so I can do it with my thumb as you can see here and you can cycle through any of these if you so wish and now just for fun let's show off the last one we got self and we'll do harm as well and we'll just call this um self harm as that's exactly what it does and then what we have here is if we right click this is just going to harm us but obviously i am in uh creative mode so if we go into survival here we can just do this and it will slowly harm us this will be a good thing say if you're using something like blood magic or you have to hurt yourself in some sort of way but then just for Sparrow, here we go. Here's our Wisp that we're firing. And we'll just find ourselves a, a little fish here. Looks like he gets dispelled in water. That's a little bit annoying. There you go. We managed to hit him at least once. Now you're probably thinking that this isn't a lot of spells and you're absolutely right and there are other ways to obviously get spells but before we get spells we actually need to get a new resource as well and that is called source. First we're going to need this imbuement chamber. This is made with six pieces of archwood planks, two gold ingots and you will get the imbuement chamber. The imbuement chamber is the, has the ability to suck out source in the environment in order to create these icons here, source gems. Source gems are made with just a piece of lapis lazuli and it will be put inside of it and as you can see it's got a crafting process. If we had a source jar which we'll talk about slightly full of source this process will actually be sped up slightly and you'll get these source gems a little bit quicker. If you're playing in older versions of ours then there are actually source all deep underground that you're able to mine up but in 1.19 that isn't a thing. But talking about source we want to place the capture it and I mentioned the source jar. This is made with four, six pieces of archwood slabs and two pieces pieces of gold and as I say this is a way of storing liquid source that you collect. Next and the first thing we're going to get is the agronomic source link. There are many different types of source links and this is essentially going to be a way of capturing source from different processes happening in the world. The agronomic source link is going to be your first one and this is made with two pieces of ingots, a piece of wheat and two source gems. Now the agronomic source link is what I have working behind me. Now we have a full source jar here so we're going to just place that back in here and what this does is every tick that happens with a growth, every growth tick with your farm is going to send a little bit of source to your agronomic source link. Now you need to have this adjacent to a source jar for it to automatically put in. Now you don't have to have just the one, you can place as many source jars as you want as long as they're within five blocks of the agronomic source link. So you don't have to have just one, you can have this in a big square like this and it will eventually fill them all up uh, over time. Now as you can see this is currently the maximum range you could have of one source block of water in the centre sort of. Um, but we, as you can see over here I've got source berries working with our little star bungle friend and the source is actually coming from all the way over there. So there is a massive area here. I I don't know the precise area of effect that it works but it's quite a large area. Now pay no attention to the star bunker at the moment we're going to come back to them later. But now we have a way of obtaining source how about we go into how we actually start making some different spells. The first we're going to think we're going to need is the scribes table. The scribes table is made with just two pieces of arced wood doesn't have to be stripped but any type of arch wood two golden nuggets and three slabs. Now we place this down here and there's a couple of different things we can do. The first thing we can do and the only thing I'm going to be showing off today is if we right click this with our spell book we will see a list of all the different types of spells we can make or glyphs as they are actually called. The effects are essentially going to be your spells then we have our forms of course which we've discussed and then we've got these other things. These other things are ways of manipulating the effects of your spells. They are called augments. Now these are split again into tiers, we've got tier 1 as you can see here, tier 2 and tier 3. Now the more you go down in tiers the more powerful and the stronger the tiers uh, spells you can do. Now we're going to stay with tier 1 because we only have a tier 1 spell book. If you wanted to get tier 2 spells you couldn't do that till you've upgraded your spell book itself. Now these aren't all going to be in your game as I have got ours elemental. So some of these such as the filters they aren't to do with Ars Nouveau by default, but today I'm going to be showing off everything that is just in vanilla Ars. 
Now, in order to get all these different spells, we're first going to have to obviously select one. Now, each of these are going to require experience points as well as certain ingredients, as you see here. Now, some of these are also going to show these little colorful icons as well. These are essences and essences we're going to cover shortly. Now, the first augment or first thing I want to recover in entirety is our first augment, and which is something you're most likely going to get first. And this is Amplify. To choose which one you want, you just have to select it and then press the select button down here and it will take you to your outside of your scribes table. Now, and it will slowly start floating above the scribes table exactly what you need to throw into your scribes table in order to make this craft. So for us, we're going to need a diamond pickaxe for this. So all I have to do is throw this in. We'll get this lovely, cool little animation and it will write our first glyph. Once it's finished, it will pop off just like so. And in order to learn it, you just have to right click in the air. And we have unlocked Amplify now. Inside our spell book, when we press C, we now have our new augment and this is Amplify. Now Amplify does exactly what it says. It actually increases the power of the spell's effects as well. It can do other things as well. So for us, if we had it on our harm here, it will do more damage. Now something to note about augments, augments only ever affect the thing that's immediately to the left of the augment. So in this case, Amplify is going to affect harm. Now Amplify cannot be added more than once. We can add Amplify many, many times. Well, it looks like I've already hit the limit of just two. Now, I'm sure you can, in older versions, you can add even more amplifiers. But as you can see here, we've just got it like this. So how about we go to self-harm for now. We do one little bit of amplify. Or in fact, let's start with the basic and let's just show you the difference. So with the self-harm normally, this will just do, let's see, about one and a half hearts. Two and a half hearts is what it does in damage. If we put an amplifier on here now, instead of two and a half hearts, it does three and a half hearts. So an extra heart of damage. One more time, and this will give us nearly half health in damage right off the bat. So it's quite powerful. Now, as you add Amplify, you are going to be using more mana per spell. And as you can see here, as I've increased to our Amplify, we've increased our amount of mana from 160, so from 150 to 165, as it says in the corner. For every single glyph you unlock, your mana bar will increase and your speed of mana regeneration will increase. So that's the first way that you can actually increase the amount of mana you have in your storage. Now, just to demonstrate as well with Amplify on our Break Tool, this is essentially now going to be a diamond tier of our break spell so if we have obsidian now and place this down what we can do is with our amplified spell we can now break obsidian think of it as now diamonds here now if we did this one more time as well uh th as you can see it can go even more one more time would probably be netherite and then even more would probably be something like cobalt if you're using tinker strong construct and this is where you can obviously get a lot of amplify but this is obviously going to make things even more expensive and i don't even have enough mana to do that one so how about we cover essences now they're going to be an integral part of you getting more glyphs first off you're going to need some source stone made with a piece of source gem surrounded by regular stone and you will get eight of these per craft this is going to be a decorative block, but it is used in a lot of crafting, such as our next item, the arcane pedestal. This is made with a source gem, four pieces of source stone and four golden nuggets. Now, you're probably going to need a lot of these pedestals in the future, so don't be afraid to spend too much source on your source stones. The first thing we're going to have is back to our imbuement chamber. Now, the imbuement chamber is the way of making our different essences. As you can see, we've got seven in total, water, fire, earth and air. And then we've also got conjuration, abjuration, adjuration, sorry, and manipulation. These are all tier one. There are no sort of tier two essences, so you can make these all off the bat. Now, I'm going to show you how to make water. First off, water is simply just going to require three pedestals around an imbuement chamber, and you're going to need to have some source nearby your imbuement chamber. It can do it without the source, but it will be very, very slow. So you definitely want the source to speed this process up. Now, all you have to do is obviously you, with your three pedestals, you have to place the necessary ingredients. Each one of these has a different necessary ingredient. For water, we need water, kelp, and snow. And then in the center here, we're going to need a source gem. All of them are going to need a source gem in the center. So all we have to do here is right click this in our imbuement chamber and it will start crafting. As we add source, it will speed up even further. And obviously this is going pretty quick. And when it's finished, we have got our water essence. Now just to show off very quickly how each one's made, fire is like this, earth, air, conjuration, abjuration, and manipulation. Now, before we move on, I'm going to go and unlock every single type of tier one vanilla Ars Nouveau spell. And then we're going to quickly have a montage of what each one does. Bounce on yourself will give you a non-full damage as well as that give you a slight bounce when being used. 
when using Amplify. This will cause you to keep your forward momentum when using it so you can just travel very quickly. Conjure Mage Block is a way of actually having mages temporary blocks come into existence and these will disappear after a short amount of time. Using Amplify will cause these blocks to be permanent and they will not disappear over time unlike the previous counterparts. To get rid of these permanent blocks you can use a new effect called Dispel we will remove these entirely. Using Dispel on yourself or someone else will completely remove any potion effects that you have on you. Conjure Mage Light is a way of using the world without torches. Just simply right click on the ground and then it will have give you a light source. Using Amplify will cause the glow to be even more powerful and using the tier 2 Glyph Dampen will cause the light to be dimmer. Using Conjure Mage Light on yourself will give you night vision. If you cast this on other enemies or other mobs it will give them night vision. Crafting on yourself will just simply open up a crafting menu. Cut when used on other mobs will essentially have the shear effects. Non shearable entities will then take damage instead. Using amplifier and cut will instead simulate an axe. Similarly using break with the sensitivity augment will cause your break to act like shears on certain blocks. However, the shear effect will not work on sheep. Delay will cause the effect to the right of the delay glyph to obviously add delay. Delay can be increased using the extend time augment, which is a tier 2 augment or duration down to decrease the time. Evaporate will remove fluids in a given area. The area or effect of evaporation can be changed with the AOE augment, which is a tier 2 augment. Freeze will freeze water when you are interacting with it, but we're also going to show off underfoot. So when you walk along water, it will actually start freezing the water. If you have ice underneath you, it will turn it into packed ice. And if you have packed ice underneath you, it will turn it into blue ice. Adding sensitivity to freeze will turn water into frosted ice, which will disappear after a short amount of time. Harvest allows you to harvest crops without destroying the plant. Ignite will set either blocks or mobs on fire. However, when used with sensitivity, this will stop blocks from turning on fire and will just set mobs on fire. Interact will allow you to interact things as if you were a player from a distance. Pick up will allow you to pick things up in a medium radius and this can be extended if you use the AOE augment. Knockback is a way of shooting enemies away from you or any other type of mobs. As well as that, it will also push blocks a little distance away from you. Launch will send entities or yourself, depending on what you use, straight upwards. Leap is very similar, but this does it in the direction that you are facing in. Place block is a way of placing blocks from inside your inventory. Now it will take items from your hotbar first. Pull is opposite to not back. It will pull entities closer towards you as well as that it will pull blocks closer towards you as well. These blocks that are being pulled to you will now be affected by gravity also. Redstone is a way of sending a redstone signal for a second just with a spell. The signal sends is a signal of 10 and can be increased with amplify or decreased with dampen. The duration of this spell can also be increased by using extend time. Rotate will cause blocks to be able to be rotated if they can. You can also rotate entities as well, but it doesn't seem to be things like mobs. Rotate with sensitivity will change the axis of it being able to be rotated. Also, if you rotate with dampen, it will counterclockwise rotate. Runes will allow you to apply a spell to a specific point on the ground, such as like here, I have it as cut. If I place it on the ground, we have a rune. Now, if I get ourselves a lovely little sheep friend here, he will get sheared. Rune with then having a pickup will allow you to actually have the rune be picked up into an adjacent inventory. Rune with sensitive after the rune will allow you to actually use your own inventory instead. Snare is a way of getting mobs to stay in place up to 7 seconds. Use extend time to increase the amount of time they are stationary. Summon Steed will summon a horse with a saddle that will disappear after a short amount of time. Summon Steed can in be increased with extended time. Summon Wolves will spawn two wolves to fight for you. They will disappear after a short amount of time and that can also be extended with extend time. Toss will throw an item out of your inventory to a location that is fired at and if it's fired into an inventory it will be placed in that inventory. And that is now all glyphs that you can get at tier 1. 
Something to note that with Summon Seed and with Summon Wolves, you will then get Summoning Sickness. This is essentially a delay before you can actually use those summons again. Now you may have noticed that I was actually linking quite a lot of effects together. Now the reason for this being is that you can actually make quite a, co a lot of different combination of things. So I open up this up, we can make something else. I want to have something go to myself. I want to have a uh, launch. I want to amplify this. Then I want to do leap and I want to amplify this. And then I want bounce. This is going to be a way of basically early game flight. Now, if I do this, as you can see, as I click, it's, it's going to take a lot, but I can now start traveling quite far. And because I have bounce afterwards, it allows me to obviously not take any full damage. Now, this isn't the best thing because we haven't got early game uh, mana regeneration up to snuff. But if we wanted something a little bit weaker, we can just have it like this after all. And it does still work the same effect. So how about we get a bit of a more automated way of getting source early on? And this is going to be using our very little friend, the Starbuncle. The Starbuncle will spawn, as I said, in any sort of woodland. But in order to actually get something called Starbuncle shards and in order to use the Starbuncles, you're going to need golden nuggets. When you see a Starbuncle in the world, they will automatically run away from you. But what you can do is if you drop down a golden nugget, they will recognize it and come and get it. After a few seconds, they will disappear and drop ourselves a Starbuncle shard. Now, the cool thing as well is that you do not have to just do one at a time per Starbuncle. Depending on what they are, you can actually drop more than one at once. And they will actually pick up multiple and give you multiple left. So just now they have actually given us oh, only one this time, but sometimes they can take up to two or three. Now in order to actually do anything with the Starbuncle shards, we are going to need a brand new piece of apparatus and that is the enchanting apparatus. Made with two source stones, two gold, one diamond and four gold nuggets, we'll get our enchanting apparatus. Now this apparatus is going to need something else known as a arcane core. The arcane core is made with six pieces of source stone, one source gem and two gold ingots. The last thing you're going to need is plenty more pedestals which we showed off earlier now this is the basic setup for your enchanting apparatus you need to have the arcane core wherever you want and on top of it you need to have the enchanting apparatus then you can have as many pedestals around it as you want i like doing it in this three by three area because then it's more more represents a crafting table but you can have as many pedestals you want up to three blocks of your enchanting table now what we want to make here is a starbuncle charm now this is made with purely gold and the starbuncle shard the center of any type of craft is going to be your enchanting apparatus so here if we place down four gold it doesn't matter where this gold is it can be um exactly as it shows in here or it can be anywhere else uh and then all we have to do is put our starbuncle shard on the inside now at tier one you will not need to use any source in order to do your apparatus however later on when we go into tier two or three different types of enchanting you are going to need some source as well however before we move on there are other things you can do with the enchanting apparatus such as making various other different types of trinkets with inside the mod but as well as that you can actually start making enchanting books as well as you can see here each of these things they're going to need multiple different pedestals here we need seven and then you just need various different types of items to give you all your different types of enchants inside the game now when you are making your enchanting books something you need to know is that your center item is always going to be the first item that it generally says um, which would just be a book in order to get tier one in order to get tier two you have to use the tier one enchanting book and in order to get to tier three or four or five and beyond you have to use the previous tier so you can't jump all the way to Fortune 3, you first have to get Fortune 1, then Fortune 2, then Fortune 3. But now let's demonstrate the Starbuncle. In order to control the Starbuncle, you're going to need something else, which is the Dominion Wand. This is also made on the Enchanting Apparatus, which is, again, very, very simple. All you just need is uh, two Source Gems, a piece of gold and a stick. It will make the Dominion Wand, as you see here. Now the Dominion Wand, it does not only actually tell us what we want our Starbuncle to do it is a way of directing source from all our different source gems using source relays but we won't be showing that off today so let's go over to our happy little friend here here we have the Starbuncle and as you can see he is picking up source berries all by himself that is the cool traits of the Carbuncle it can pick up any fully grown star source berries automatically this makes it a very very good way of getting early game source automatically because we can every single type there is growth with the source berries the agronomic source link will actually take it so this is a 
100% fully automated way of getting our source early game. But how do we actually control the Starbuncle? Now I'm going to be doing this over here, otherwise it gets a little bit confusing. What we can do is first place an inventory, because the Starbuncle, essentially all it is very good at is moving items. So what we have to do is first right click it on the ground, and here we go, we now have our Starbuncle. As you can see, it says storing items in locations 1 and taking items from locations 0. If we go back over to our other one over here, this guy is actually still taking items from only one location, and that is going to be all of these on the floor. When it says one location, it means it's randomly generating and updating one location on the ground. It's not taking it from the source berry it is just obviously harvesting one then picking it up off the floor but it's also if i can get my hands on it it is placing it i'm not going to be able to get it it's placing it in all these barrels so two four six eight nine it's placing it in nine different inventories so you can have it pick up from multiple locations and drop in multiple locations to start off with the Starbuncle, to make sure he's completely fresh and wiped, you want to hold shift and right click on the Starbuncle. This is going to completely clear tasks. When you first spawn it in, obviously it has no tasks. If we don't hold shift and right click, it will tell us, why. where do you want to store entities? We have this saved, don't click anything else, and shift right click on where you want your Starbuncle to start storing entities. And now it says here, Starbuncles will store items here. Now any items that I throw on the ground, eventually there'll be a little bit of an update, and the Starbuncle will go pick it up, and will go put it inside of the barrel. just like so. Now the Starbuncle doesn't have exactly a very large range. If I went all the way over here and placed a block down, he would not be able to recognize it. I don't know the exact amount. It seems to be something like six or seven blocks, but eventually he does sort of recognize that there is a sand block just over here. Now, is that just in range? It's not just in range. Bit closer. There we go. It sees it managing to be able to pick it up. But now how about we want to take things from inventory, if we want to be able to put things from this barrel to over here, what we can do is now hold shift and right click on it, sorry, yeah, hold shift and right click on this, this will set your position, and then we want to right click on this guy, and now since the star barnacle is taking from this inventory. As you can see, because it also wants to pick things up from there, it's just taking it out and putting it back in, so you want to reset the guy first. So now let's start again, we want a position set of this guy. And we want to place it in this guy. He's now going to take things from this inventory. Then we want to store entities over here. The star bunker is now going to pick things up from there and place it in here, as you can see, like this. Now we didn't have a lot in there, so let's just do something more like that. And it can take full stacks and it's very, very quick. Now obviously we want a bigger range than this. So how about we break this? Place all these back in here. And this guy seems to have recognized that there is something over here. I guess not. We want you to take items from over there. I want to place them in you. And then we will store items in here. There you go. He's found that other bit of sand finally. But now he's got a stored point. This carbuncle is going to be able to take things over here. And move them over here. a very good way of early game transportation without using pipes, purely magic based. Now in order to dispel the carbuncle you can either kill him or hold shift and fire a dispel at him. As you can see this. Now the cool thing is the charm is actually going to remember what you had this guy doing and now as long as you don't break these two blocks, uh, obviously things will keep working. You may also dye these fellas. You can use purple, red, yellow, orange, blue or green in order to dye the carbuncles to do different things. Now there are other things you can do with the starbuncle such as filtering items to go into different chests but we're going to cover that more when we go over the familiars episode. For now this is the basic starbuncle performances. But now how about we get into a way of regenerating our mana quicker. The first thing we're going to want is a mage bloom seed. Now this is made inside our enchanting apparatus which is just four sources here and then a seed. Now again this is not going to need any sort of source jar or anything like that as it's a tier one and this is going to give us our mage bloom seed when you have the mage bloom seed you just plant it down like any other type of seed and when it's fully grown it will look like this on right click it will give you another seed and a mage bloom uh harvest itself 
Now these mage bloom harvests, all they simply do is turn it into mage bloom fiber and you get four per mage bloom. These fibers are used for many different things, but the main thing we're going to be using for is armor. In this version of ours, there are three different types of armor. We have got the sorcerers, we've got the arcanists, and we've got the battle mages armor. In earlier versions, there is only one different type and those types can be upgraded. But this type here, they can be upgraded, but they work slightly differently. Now, in order to make all of these, they are all made in your enchanting apparatus. As you can see, the only difference in the craft is the center item is the tier of armor. If you are using gold armor, you are going to essentially be the weakest when it comes to defense. However, you're, you will be able to augment your armor in stronger ways, allowing you to craft or use stronger spells. The Arcanist is sort of your mid-ground. It allows you to have a little bit of defense as well as having a slightly weaker spell set. And then Diamonds will give you the most amount of defense, but will cast the weakest spells. Now, by default, each of these will give you the exact same amount of extra mana and mana regeneration. At the moment, we've got 570 mana. However, once I wear each one of these, we now have 690 mana. Now, it doesn't matter which one I have, you will get 690. But now, how do we go into upgrading these different armors? To upgrade the armors, we're going to need something called the Alteration Table. This is made using the Scribes Table and four pieces of the Mage Broom Fiber, and this will give you your Alteration Table. As well as that, you're also going to need threads. You can get the Blank Thread, and with the Blank Thread, you will be able to make all your other different types of threads. Blank thread is made with six pieces of mage bloom fiber and three golden nuggets, and you only get one of these per craft. If you type in uh, with our R's here and then thread, we can see that there are many, many different types of thread, and these are all going to be your different upgrades. Most of the tier one, tier three will be your gliding because it uses a uh, elytra to craft, and then we've got the thread of the wixy, which uh, that uses some nether stuff, so that'll be a tier two one. But everything else is. Um, a tier one now i'm not going to go through how and what if every single one works but i will show you how to apply each of these different types before we do that when we look inside of our book we can see how our thread tiers work so we know that we can upgrade things in three different ways there are different slots inside your different armors and then depending on your tier of armor itself will give you your diff uh, your amounts of thread types that you can get it's a little bit confusing, but stay with me. We're in tier one at the moment, so this is our tier one armor. And in our tier one armor at the head, we can have a tier one thread. In the chest piece, we can have a tier two thread. Legs, a tier two thread. And a uh, the boots, we can have a tier one thread. If we upgraded our armor here to a tier two armor, then our upgrades will increase. And then if we upgraded our armor to a tier three, then our upgrades would increase again, as you can see here. Now, this is obviously the best for casting magic spells, the sorcerer set. However, if we go to the arcanist, you can see that all our magic abilities have dropped slightly with all the different tiers. And when we go to the battle mage, it drops even more. In fact, at tier one, every slot, it has a just a tier one thread, the same as the arcanist. So there's no point wasting your diamonds on doing this until you really get to the top tier over here But for now if you want the best amount of spells Then you want to really be with the gold set the sorcerer set now to apply your different threads All you have to do is simply right click your piece of armor that you want to apply anything to and put it on side When you apply that different um, piece of armor It will tell you the tier of thread that you can place on it with the shoes It's obviously tier one and with the leggings It can be tier two in order to apply your thread all you have to do is simply right click your thread on here then it will do this little animation to say that it's done and you can take it off and now you can wear it as you see fit and this it will give us a blank thread 2. Blank thread 2 doesn't actually do anything itself and if we had it on the uh, shoes what will happen as well we can equip it but uh, a little message will pop up. You have equipped armor that contains a perk you already have. You only receive the effect once. This is something else we need to think about when we are putting our different threads on here. Say we wanted to have our complete suit with um, threads of shocking damaging effects caused to the target to, sh to be shocked for a short duration before the S effect results inflicts static charge at tier 3 now we obviously could have this on all of our pieces of armor however it would only work on one piece of armor so you're wasting it on all the different types so in which case at the moment we can obviously by our book only have one different thread installed but we can have only one of each different type 
Later on here, it's a similar deal. When you have the two or three, you can have all three be shocked, but uh, only one of them will actually take effect. So you want a different slot for each different thing. So when you get to tier three, you can have up to 12 different threads installed, but four of them can be tier three, four, six of them can be tier two, and two of them can be tier one until you get to the later stages, of course. Obviously, as it said over here with shocking, only tier three can give a extra effect depending on which ones you use not all of them can give an extra effect at tier three but some of them can you just need to remember that the lower the tier is on your thread the less damage it's going to do and the higher the tier is on your thread it's going to be obviously more effective now the last thing i want to show off when it comes to this is now that i have a fully equipped piece of equipment we have 690 mana in here in total if you take this all off that's 570 which we've discussed when you just get all the glyphs but if we have everything equipped we obviously get 590. Now this is the same no matter whether we're using the Ardents or the Battle Mages, we'll end up with 690 overall. But for now guys, that is going to be the very end of the episode one of Ars Nouveau. There is a lot of information here, it's a very long episode, but this is all very necessary information to know when you get into Ars Nouveau. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, it would really help me out, and ring the bell button to stay notified when, this, when these videos go live. But until next time, guys, take care.